Okay, so you don't normally see this beautiful face, um, but I felt like I had to do this part of the lesson this way, so I'm terribly uncomfortable, as you're going to see. But I guess that's just the way that it goes. So if you take your notes and take a peek, the next thing that we're going to be studying is something called axial and equatorial. Um, when we were learning about these molecules in class, we were talking about the trigonal bipyramidal shape, this shape here, and we were saying that there was one straight up and one straight down, and then there were three in the middle that made that plane. Well, they actually have names, so we're going to introduce the concept of their names. So these two here are called the axial positions, the ones that go straight up and straight down, like the axis through the earth, okay, same idea. And then the ones in the middle, just like the equator of the earth, those are called the equatorial positions, okay, so axial versus equatorial positions. Now, we know that these um, degrees are 90, and the ones in between here are 120. Um, remember, that was part of our lesson before, and actually it's down at the bottom of your notes as well for this part um, too. But what I wanna talk about is in class, we were looking at where the non-bonding group would be if these, instead of five bonding groups, we had one non-bonding group. So I have that molecule here like so. So these are the axials and then notice the non-bonding electron pairs in the equatorial position. The reason why it's in the equatorial position is because there was a 120 degree difference between all of these equatorial positions whereas there's only 90 here. Remember electrons want these pairs want to be away from each other as much as possible so the way that they're going to get away from each other is by going to where there was a 120 degree difference versus that 90 degree difference. If they had gone to this position or this position they would be 90 degrees away from the next closest one and they definitely don't want that so instead you have them here in these middle positions because now they have all this space and all this room to move around so the non-bonding pair if you have a one that has four bonding one non-bonding the non-bonding pair it goes in the middle now if you have three bonding and two non-bonding it still goes in the middle so that was the t-shaped remember our t-shaped one so you have your axial position straight up and straight down notice my two non-bonding pairs are in those uh, equatorial positions and I have one more left here hence the T shape okay so these are the axials and these are still the equatorials but our non-bonding pairs are there and then if you remember if there were two bonding and three non-bonding then it made a linear shape and that's because all three of the non-bonding pairs will go in the center again there's more room there for those molecules now if we flip over and think about octahedral there's 90 degree different for all octahedrals. Remember, these we could call axial, I guess, and the ones in the middle we could call equatorial, but with this one it doesn't really matter as much because there's 90 degree angles everywhere. So when you go to make your first molecule with a non-bonding pair, right, with one non-bonding pair and five bonding pairs, we call this what? Square pyramidal? Good job. So square pyramidal, that non-bonding pair is down there. It didn't matter where I put them, it was going to look like this. You know, if I put it there, if I put it there, if I put it there, I mean it looks like this no matter what. But the second non-bonding pair, so if I have four bonding groups and two non-bonding groups, has to go opposite the other one. Okay, so it has to go off this other side in order to have as much room as possible. If you put it in one of these positions here, then it wouldn't have had as much room. It would be crowded. So it'll always go opposite. Okay, and then we know if one more is missing, it would go here. The next one would go here, here, and here. Well, obviously, you wouldn't have that many missing. But So that's the idea that you have there for your trigonal bipyramidal, your octahedral, your axial, the term axial the ones that were up straight up and straight down versus the equatorial ones that are going around. Um, again, you have your bond angles down there at the bottom of the paper. Those bond angles are important to know. You do have to have those committed to memory, and we are going to do a little bit more about some changes that can happen to those bond angles depending on what's going on with your molecule. So.